Oh my gosh. Could there possibly be more videos on YouTube telling you how much money you can make selling digital products on Etsy? There must be hundreds of videos and they all seem to suggest that you can make tens of thousands of dollars per month selling digital downloads like templates, planners, AI designs, resumes, and on and on. But how realistic is that? The number of sellers on Etsy jumped by a massive half a million shops in just the first quarter of 2023, the biggest increase in quite a while. All these people represent new competition on Etsy, and some of them will be selling digital products. The good news for serious sellers among you is that I suspect most of them will do a poor job setting up their Etsy listings and give up quickly when they don't get sales or just get bored working on it. It's human nature. The spoils then will go to those who make the best listings and stick with it. In this video, I'm going to answer two questions. First, how much money does the average seller on Etsy make, meaning those who actually make sales, keeping in mind that many shops don't. As a seller, even though this is an average, I'd still be striving to make this my minimum. And second, how can you find winning products to sell? My method for this is probably a little different than what you've seen elsewhere and should help you level up your game. While I'm going to focus on digital products, this video applies just as well to all products on Etsy, whether digital, print on demand, homemade or vintage or anything else. By the time we're done, you'll be better informed and more likely to succeed. As a quick introduction, my name is Will. I'm the former chief financial officer of several software companies. I've got an undergraduate degree in economics, an MBA from Cornell University, and I'm a chartered financial analyst, which is an analytical program mostly for Wall Street folks. I've worked on a lot of companies over my career, and I'm always looking to find the success formula for businesses I'm evaluating or involved in. If you've seen my other videos about Etsy, you may know that in 2022, the average Etsy seller sold only about $2,169 worth of product. With average sales that low, you can't help but wonder whether it makes sense to sell on Etsy at all. So let's tackle that question first. Where does that $2,169 figure come from? It's the total sales for 2022 in the Etsy marketplace divided by the total number of active sellers. Etsy defines an active seller as someone who sold an item or incurred a bill charge in the last 12 months. Incurred a bill charge means someone that Etsy billed for some kind of service in the period, such as for listing fees or advertising, even if that seller never sold anything on Etsy or just had one item listed. What we don't know is the split between how many sellers on Etsy did sell things and how many sellers did not sell anything. Unfortunately, we also don't know how much of what was sold on Etsy was digital products as compared to physical products. So for this discussion, we're left with just using overall averages. Now for a bit of analysis. I'm going to assume that half of the active sellers on Etsy made no sales in 2022. Why half? First, in 2015, Etsy published the results of a survey of sellers that said that only 46% had applied for a business tax ID. That suggests to me that, at least at the time, roughly half of the shops were making sales. Second, well, I'm not going to tell you the second reason quite yet. So I'm assuming half of Etsy shops made no sales in 2022. Here's why this matters. If half of the shops are making no sales, then the other half are making all the sales. Using this estimate then, the average sales for the shops that do make sales is about $4,300 per year. As a potential seller on Etsy, that sounds a little more interesting than $2,169 where we started. Let's drill into this a bit further because this is important. For the shops that got no sales, why did they get no sales? How much work and perseverance did the owners of these shops put into it? Of course, we have no way of answering this question, but understanding human nature is helpful. I assume that a lot of the shops that did not make sales did not make a full and sustained effort at it. Now, hold on. If you have a shop that you put a lot of work into but didn't get sales, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about, in general, what people do. In general, a lot of people do things to try them out, or maybe even with the full initial intent of persevering, but then don't actually make a full effort or stick with it. For example, according to USA Today, 67% of gym memberships go completely unused. That's two-thirds. People sign up with the full intention to go, but then never go. 
In the Etsy world, therefore, it's reasonable to assume that a large number of sellers opened up a shop, listed a few items, and then for whatever reason, basically didn't do anything else and therefore make no sales. This, by the way, is my second reason from a few minutes ago as to why I'm assuming that half of the shops make no sales. Again, then, I think my assumption is reasonable that Etsy shops who do make sales generate an average of $4,300 per year in revenue, if not more, and that those would likely be those shops who are active, persistent sellers with the right mix of products. Speaking of being active and persistent, I'm trying to come out with weekly videos about entrepreneurship and finance. If you're finding this video helpful, or if you wanna join me as I explore a variety of topics, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe too. While you're doing that, here's a brief video of me hang gliding in the Alps. Pretty cool, huh? Back to the discussion now. Second, let's think about what products to sell on Etsy. First, imagine a scenario where Etsy was brand new, no sellers, no buyers. And imagine there was no other source of information where you could do research on what items buyers wanted. What would you list in your Etsy shop? Given no other information, you'd be shooting blind. You would just list whatever it was you had to sell or what you thought might sell well for whatever reason. And then over time, as buyers started coming in and making purchases, you'd find out what actually sold and what did not. Now back to reality. There are lots of sellers and items listed for sale on Etsy and lots of shoppers buying things. There are a lot of transactions to look at. So you can see what sells and what does not. To use an analogy, if you're a fisherman, wouldn't you prefer to go fishing where you know there are fish? As a seller on Etsy, you'd probably have better luck selling things that are known to sell well rather than things that don't sell much or trying to sell things that weren't on Etsy at all before you listed them. How do people figure out which is which? How can you identify products that sell? Fortunately, we can look at Etsy sales data. Unfortunately, there is a huge amount of sales data when it comes to Etsy. Nearly 100 million products listed for sale by 5.9 million sellers. You can't just scroll around Etsy and hope to figure it out on your own. You simply cannot navigate this much information without using tools to help you find what you need to know. So let's talk about the two main methods of researching which products to sell and the tools to help you do that research. One of the more commonly talked about research methods to find products to sell is to use a keyword research tool. With a keyword research tool, people try to identify keywords that buyers search for a lot in Etsy, but where there are relatively fewer product listings. These desirable keywords would indicate products with less competition in Etsy. If you can find those keywords, you could put up your own products and have improved odds of making sales. That's a perfectly valid approach. In my experience though, having spent many hours trying to find those magic products with relatively less competition, it can be challenging to find good keywords. So many people use this approach already that it may have lost some of its effectiveness. However, consumer tastes evolve, so you need to do this just to stay on top of market demand and budding new opportunities. For newer niches that are getting traction on Etsy, it probably works well as a research method before competition has a chance to build up. For digital products, which are relatively new as a category, you may still have some good luck doing keyword research to find untapped opportunities. The other approach to identifying products to sell starts with the assumption, which is based in reality, by the way, that most products on Etsy are pretty competitive already because there are a lot of listings. Therefore, what you do is pick your niche meaning the category of products that you wanna sell, and then study the stores and listings in your niche that are selling really well. By thoughtfully studying your chosen competition, you will identify their top sellers and then try to find weaknesses in those listings so you can make better listings and then capture sales yourself. You are fishing where the fish are known to be and trying to use a better net than the competition to catch them. Let's do an example so you can see how this would work. Say you're interested in selling a certain digital product, maybe a Tumblr wrap SVG file, which is used to decorate tumblers, glasses basically for beverages. The Etsy research tool that I use is called Everbee. So to start, I'll go into the Everbee app. To get started, I'll go under the research tools section and select 
product analytics. Then in the search bar field at the top of the page, I'll type in the product that I'm looking for, which in this case is Tumblr Wrap SVG, and then click on the search products button. Everbee will search Etsy listings and show me the products listed on Etsy that included the words that I searched for. Products should be listed in descending order based on monthly revenue column. And if not, just click on the revenue column name to put it in that order. This list shows us the top selling products among the items that I search for. This is what customers are telling us they want. Now study the results one by one. Notice that even though we search for SVG files, not all the results are SVG files, some are PNG. From this, you might realize that you want to sell PNG files too, and not just SVG, since many of the top selling items are PNG. Or if you really just focus on SVG, you can just ignore the other results. Everbee shows some really helpful details for each listing, including the full name of the item, the name of the shop that sells the item, the estimated number of monthly sales of the item, the estimated monthly revenue, how old the listing is, and the conversion rate of the listing all the way off to the right, plus other things. If you wanted to, you can use a filter to include or exclude items from the list according to any attributes listed. For example, you might want to exclude listings that are less than three months old or, or maybe exclude items that cost more than $20. It's, it's up to you. So go through the listings one by one to find the ones that you like and might want to make your own version of. To drill deeper into a particular listing, click on the listing and a window pops open showing the listing data in an easier to read format with all the tags used. Also, and this is so helpful, Everbee has a product pricing and profitability calculator. Click on that calculator icon and it pops open. It'll show you the product's gross price, deduct any discount if it's on sale, include shipping if the seller is charging a shipping fee, and then deduct all the Etsy fees as well as an estimate of the product's cost of goods to then show you the estimated dollar profit amount and profit margin. This is super helpful to know to help you decide if that might be an attractive item for you to sell. You can use the same calculator to help you figure out the prices to set on your products for your listings. I know that setting prices is a problem that a lot of people struggle with because it can be a little tricky to figure out including all the Etsy fees. Anyway, this is a very helpful tool. The last thing I'll show for each product on the list is you can click into Etsy to see the full actual product listing in Etsy itself. Back in Everbee, mark any item that you're interested in as a favorite, whether it's an example of a good listing or a not so good listing for comparison. Do this by clicking on the star icon to the left of the listing. To then see the full list of favorites that you've made after you've been reviewing your way through the rows, click on the favorites here on the left menu. Now you need to roll up your sleeves and do your analysis of the competition, just like a product manager would do at a company. Make notes as you do this exercise. Again, and I can't emphasize this enough, you're thinking about making your own versions of these listings because there's obviously a lot of customer demand for the product. That's why you picked it to study. Fish where the fish are. Look through the listings and try to identify common attributes of the best selling items and what the gaps might be that you can improve upon. For example, what colors are available for the product? What patterns? What sizes? What file formats? Can you approve upon that? Look at the photos used in the listing. How many photos are included? What angles? And how close up are the pictures of the items? What parts of the product are shown? What sorts of instructions or product details were included? And how are those presented to the shoppers? What does the description say? Does it include good sales copy, such as how easy the product is to access and use, and how it will help make the buyer's life easier if that applies to the product? Is the product sold as a bundle or with some kind of value add? What tags were used? As you study different listings from different shops, you may notice a pattern, things that differentiate the listings that sell well from similar listings that don't sell as well. Notice their pricing too. You're not necessarily trying to beat them on price though because everyone can simply lower price. Don't get in a race to zero. Your job with this exercise is to notice the differences in the listings and then build your listings to be better if possible or at least as good as the competition. To be clear, don't copy their products, make your own versions of them. 
If you do this well, you should hopefully catch some fish of your own. And by that, of course, because some people are way too literal, I mean, make sales. You'll make money. If you like what you've seen with Everbee and think it could help you, definitely check it out. You've seen here how powerful and fast the tool is, so you've already gotten a taste, and there are more features that we didn't even get to. And in terms of support, the folks at Everbee have been very responsive and helpful to my questions. I'll put a link in the description under the video. You can start with their free version, which might be all you need. It is an affiliate link, meaning I'll get a small commission at no cost to you if you end up liking the product and upgrading from their free plan to the paid plan. As I've said in other videos, I won't ever recommend a product if I don't think it's good. My reputation with you is much more important than a small commission. But if you do use the link, I thank you for helping support the channel by doing so. To wrap this up then, I know that this analytical approach that I laid out today might give you a little angst. I understand that. But if you don't do some research to find good products to sell, those that customers have proven that they want to buy, then you're just guessing and you have to do competitor analysis. There's really no way around it, particularly as a newer seller trying to get good as quickly as possible. With that, I wish you the best of luck. I hope this was helpful, and I will see you in the next one.